Hello dear students, so today we have UPSC CSAT 2017 question paper with us and uh, if I talk about the questions of maths and reasoning in this paper, so here we have around 45 plus questions based on maths and reasoning and obviously the, the difficulty level of this paper is moderate to tough. This paper is not easy paper, right? Because here I have seen the questions the questions are more from number system right and uh, such questions are there where you have to think a lot and sometimes you have to make cases and in this paper we have long puzzles right so uh, this paper is not at all easy this paper was moderate to tough right but yes uh, this time the csat was qualifying only so uh, around 33% questions can be searched out but yes still uh, I will say for this paper some preparation was needed right if you are going without any preparation then it is really it is really difficult for you to find those 33% question around 27 questions you need to solve in this paper just to qualify but it is really difficult to find those 27 questions because obviously if you have to solve 27 questions then obviously you will plan around 40 questions right I mean you will think about around 40 questions to solve because uh, you want yourself to be in the safer side right so that's why I will say to find those 40 questions in this paper was really difficult inside the uh, examination hall right because at that time there is a pressure and when you're sitting at your home then it is okay to say that this paper is moderate or this paper is like 40 questions are uh, easily uh, found out right but uh, this is not so during the examination fine so now let's start with the question I'll show you the questions also first question first question says if second and fourth Saturday and all Sundays are taken as only holidays for an office what would be the minimum number of possible working days of any month of any year see everyone minimum working days right they are asking about minimum working days so we will think about minimum number of days in a month so minimum number of days in a month is in February right and there are 28 days why I have taken 28 I'm not taking a leap year because they are saying any year right so if they are saying any year so I'm considering an ordinary year not a leap year right so just assume that it is a February of ordinary year right which has 28 days and they are saying second and fourth Saturday so second and fourth Saturday it means two Saturdays right because 28 days means 7 into 4 7 means one week and 4 is 4 so this these are four weeks right so these are four weeks actually so four weeks means four Saturdays and four Sundays so they are saying second and fourth Saturday is holiday so obviously out of four Saturdays two Saturdays are holiday and all Sundays all Sundays means all four Sundays are holiday plus four Sunday right so there are six holidays fine there are six holidays so total 28 days are there out of that six are holidays so how many working days are there 22 working days we have right so total we have 22 working days all right everyone the answer is 22 right the correct option is option number B fine okay right simple question but yes here you have to uh, you should be knowing like from where to we should start the question so obviously like you have to approach the question with February right okay now let's move to other one Next question says, if there is a policy that one third of a population of a community has migrated every year from one place to some other place, what is the leftover population of that community after the sixth year if there is no further growth in the population during this period? Okay, see everyone, this question is based on some consecutive change, right? This question is based on the consecutive change. 
Consecutive change in based, uh, I mean, conjugate, consecutive change you must have seen in the case of compound interest. Here, the consecutive increment is there, and value depreciation, right? If the price of some article is decreasing every year, right? Value depreciation, you can say. Fine. So, value depreciation, it is also the case of consecutive decrement. Fine. So, here. So, in these type of questions, what we do? They are saying one third of the population. So. Just assume that the population is three unit. This is the initial population, right? And one third decrement. So obviously one third of this is what one. So decrement of one third, decrement of one, right? So final population is two, right? So after the decrement of one, it will the remaining population will be two. Fine. And but the question is, the question is, I mean. What is the leftover? What fraction is left over? Right? What is the leftover population of that community after the six year? So leftover fraction. So leftover fraction, right? So leftover fraction is what? Two third. Original population was three. New population, I mean the left population is two. So what fraction is left? The fraction is two. Two by three. Right. So I mean this is the numerator and this will be the denominator My means final divided by initial will be the fraction left over fine now this is what this is actually the first year right now when they are saying the second year so just do the power of 2 so 3 square and 4 square sorry 2 square so just do the power of 2 so 3 to the power 2 and 2 to the power 2 so for second year it will be 2 square divided by 3 square so which is what which is 4 by 9 so leftover fraction will be 4 by 9 so for third year it is 3 cube just do the power 3 right so 3 cube and 2 cube so this is what this is 2 cube by 3 cube so 2 cube is what 8 and 3 cube is what 27 so the leftover population will be 8 by 27 right so now they are saying about the sixth year fine so sixth year is three raised to the power six, and here it is two raised to the power six. So this is two raised to the power six divided by three raised to the power six. Two raised to the power six is sixty-four, and three raised to the power six is seven twenty-nine. Right. So sixty-four by seven twenty-ninth of the original population. Right. This is the leftover. So this will be the answer. This is answer number D. Okay, everyone. Right. See. We have explained this concept in a very detailed manner in our paid course, right? So if uh, I mean, if you will, if you have joined our paid course, then you must be getting it very well. Else, I mean, else also I'm telling you the concept, right? But in our paid course, we have discussed this concept in very detailed manner. Any question of this kind will come, you will be able to solve that question. Fine. So now let's move to the other question. Next question says, four tests, physics, chemistry, maths, and biology are to be conducted on four consecutive days, not necessarily in the same order. The physics test is held before the test, which is conducted after biology. Okay, chemistry is conducted exactly after two tests are held. Okay, fine. So there are four tests, right? They are PCMB, I am writing it, physics, chemistry, maths, and biology, right? So they are saying chemistry test is conducted exactly after two tests, okay? So let's say this is test number one, this is test number two, this is test number three, and this is test number four. So here third test will be chemistry, fine. And after that, they are saying the physics test is held before the test which is conducted after biology, right? So after biology, biology can't be la the last. And physics test is held before, so obviously physics can't be the last. Right, the question is which is the last test is held? So obviously physics can't be the last, biology can't be the last, so what is the last test? Mathematics will be the last test. Right everyone, the answer is mathematics. Clear? Okay, it's a simple question, you have to read the data carefully and you will find the answer, no problem. Right? Okay, fine. Now let's move to the other one. Next question is saying, the sum of the income of A and B is more than that of C and D. T 
taken together. Okay, so A plus B is more than C plus D taken together. Okay, the sum of income of A plus C is same as B and D taken to taken together. So A plus C is same as B plus D taken together. Okay, moreover A earns half as much as the sum of the income of B and D. Okay, fine. So two A is equal to B plus D, right? Okay, everyone. So with this equation, we can deduce two things. Number one, here two A is equal to B plus D. It means what? It means A is equal to B plus D by two. Fine. A is equal to B plus D by two. It means A is the average. A is the average of B and D, right? From this statement, I mean this equation, we can say. A is the average of B and D. Fine, it is clear. All right. Now after that, here we have, here we have, B plus D is equal to A plus C, right? So B plus D is equal to two A here, right? So I am just substituting the value of B plus D in this equation, right? So A plus C is equal to two A. So this implies. A can be cancelled out. This implies A is equal to C, right? A is equal to C. Okay, everyone. And here, here I'm just putting A is equal to C. So A plus B is equal. Sorry, A plus B is greater than. A plus B is greater than. I'm putting A in place of C because A and C are equal, right? So this is. A plus B is greater than A plus D. So A A can be cancelled. This implies B is greater than D. Right. Now we will use this over here. Right. A is the average of B and D, where B is greater than D. It means B is greatest. A is somewhere between B and D. Right. And A is equal to C. We have already proved here. So A is equal to C. And obviously, this is the condition, right? Okay, everyone, fine. This is the condition. Why I have done this? Because because A is the average of B and D, so obviously A will be lying exactly between B and D. Fine, because A is the average of B and D, so A will be lying exactly between B and D. And a is equal to c. It is already we have prov proved fine. So a is equal to c. So this is the situation, right? This is the exact relation between a, b, c, d. Fine. What is the question? Whose income is the highest? So highest income is of b, right? Whose income is the highest? So highest income is of b. Okay, everyone, fine. All right. Now let's move to the other question. Next question is: Consider the following statements. Good voice is a natural gift, but one has to keep practicing to improve and excel well in the field of music. All right. Conclusions: Natural gifts need nurturing and care. Yeah, it is correct because they are saying good voice is a natural gift, but one has to keep practicing and improve uh, to improve and excel well. Right. So obviously. uh we should keep nurturing the natural gift and obviously we should care the natural gift right the next statement even though one's voice is not good one can keep practicing this is not mentioned in the question i mean in the statement so we can't say this see everyone the statement may be correct but if it is not given in this uh, question statement you don't have to assume from your side right it may be correct but with the uh, in the perspective of this question this is not correct fine so only conclusion one follows from this statement right a option will be the correct choice okay fine all right now let's move to other question next question is there are three pillars x y z of different heights three spiders a b c start to climb on these pillars simultaneously in one chance A climb on X by six centimeter, but slips down by one centimeter. Okay, so in one chance, A climbs up by six and slips down by five. So this is effectively 
A is climbing 5 centimeter, right? Now B and C, right? So and A is climbing on X, B is climbing on Y and C is climbing on Z. And what about B? B climbs up by 7 and slips down by 3, so effectively 4 centimeter. And C, C climbs up by 6.5 but slips down by 2, so this is 4.5 right 4.5 centimeter all right now after that if each of them requires 40 chances to reach the top of the pillar what is the height of the shortest pillar see everyone if each of them will require 40 chances right so you know what will happen in 39 chances they will be climbing up and slipping down but in 40th chances but in 40th chances, if, uh, I mean each spider will reach on the top and it will not slip again. Right? In 40th chances, it will not slip again. I mean after 40th uh, climbing, it will not slip again. Fine. So obviously, till 39 climbs, I mean till 39 chances, every spider will be climbing 39 into, I mean first spider will be climbing 39 into 5. Second in equal to 39 into 4 and third will be 39 into 4.5. Right. Okay. And what about 40th chance? So 40th chance will be what? We, we just had to add the positive thing. This is 6 and here it is 7 and here it is 6.5. Right. We need to find the shortest distance. I mean shortest height. I'm writing it here. Right. So shortest. 39 into 4 here 39 into 5 obviously 39 into 4.5 so obviously this value will be the shortest right because this is 39 into 4 right so 39 into 4 is what 39 into 4 is 156 156 plus 7 this is 163 centimeter right okay everyone this is 163 centimeter fine so correct option is option number b friends this type of question i mean this type of questions we have done I mean many questions of this type we have done in our paid course because this is a type of question and this type of question you can get anywhere I mean in time and work this type of question is there in pipes and system this type of question is there right so this type of question you, you can get anywhere or in time speed distance also you can get this type of question right so this is a type of question that you should that you should be knowing because this this type of question can come in any exam and this is actually a famous type of question for competitive exams right so uh, this is an important type so you should be preparing right all right now let's move to other one next question is rights are certain advantageous conditions of social well-being indispensable to the true development of the citizen in the light of this statement which one of the following is the correct understanding of the rights okay see everyone rights are certain advantageous conditions of social well-being to the true development of the citizen social well-being indispensable to the true development of the citizen so see everyone rights are talking about what rights are talking about social well-being as well as the development of an individual of citizen right so first question is first statement is saying rights aim at individual good only no it is not correct rights aim at social good only no it is not correct rights aim at both individual and social good yeah it is correct right fine everyone so the c statement is the correct choice right now let's move to the other one next question is 15 students failed in a class of 52 okay so 52 students are there out of the out of those those 52 15 are failed so 37 are passed right so 37 students are passed okay after removing the name of failed students a merit order list has been prepared in which the position of ramesh is 22nd from the top okay so there are 37 students right ramesh is 22nd 
Ramesh is 22nd. So it means 21 students are above Ramesh and 15 students are below Ramesh. Right. Okay. What is his position from the bottom? Okay. So 15 students are already here. So 16th position will be of Ramesh if we consider it from the bottom. Right. So from the bottom Ramesh's position will be 16th because 15 students are already there. So after 15 it will be 16th. Ramesh's position will be 16th from the bottom. Right. Okay. Now let's move to the other one. Next question is saying consider the following a plus b means a is the son of b okay a minus b means a is the wife of b okay what does expression p plus r minus q means p plus r a is son of b it means q is the uh, p plus r sorry p plus r p plus r means p is the son of r right so P is the son of R. P is the son, it means P is male. Fine. R minus Q means R is the wife of Q. R is the wife of Q. It means Q is male, R is female. So R and Q are husband and wife and their son is P. Right? This is the relation. Now, what does the expression this mean? A option Q is the son of P. No, it is not correct. Q is the wife of P. No, it is not correct. Q is the father of P. Yes, Q is the father of P. Right, everyone? Q is the father of P because here R and Q are husband wife and their son is P. Right? So Q is father, R is mother and their son is P. Fine. So Q is the father of P is the correct statement. Fine. All right. Now let's move. Next question says Gopal bought a cell phone and sold it to Ram at 10% profit. Okay. So Gopal and Ram, there are two characters, right? So let's say Gopal bought it for 100 rupees and sold it to Ram at 10% profit. So 10% profit. So 100 plus 10, it is 110, right? Okay. So Gopal bought it for rupees 100 and Ram bought it for rupees 110. All right. After that, then Ram wanted to sell it back to Gopal at 10% loss. See everyone, if Ram will be selling it to Gopal at 10% loss, so 110 minus 11, I mean 10% of 110 is what? 11. So Ram will be selling it at 11 rupees less. It means he is selling it at 99 rupees. Right everyone? Okay. After that, what will be Gopal's position if he agreed? Gopal's position if he agreed. Everyone Gopal's position. Gopal, Gopal made a profit of 10 rupees here and Gopal is making a profit of 1 rupee here. Right. Fine. Why? Because uh, this is the product of 100 rupees and Gopal is buying it for 99 rupees. Right. So Gopal is saving 1 rupee here and Gopal has already made a profit of 10 rupee here. So actually Gopal is getting 10 plus 1, 11 rupees, right? Ideally Gopal's profit will be 11 rupees, right? But here options are neither gain nor loss. No, it is not correct. Loss of 1%, no. Gain of 1%, gain of 0.5%. See everyone, according to me, none of the option is correct. But in the examination, if I have to choose an option, I will choose gain of 1%. But I'm again saying none of the answer is correct right but if in the examination if i have to choose then i will choose gain of one percent fine because they are saying like this they are talking about these two situations okay, like gopal has bought it for rupees 100 and now gopal is buying it for rupees 99 so gopal's gain is one rupee so they are saying like this but this is not correct they have missed here 10 rupees fine so the answer is gopal's uh, actual gain will be rupees 11 right all right now let's move to the other one next question is suppose the average weight of 9 person is 50 kg so weight of 9 person is 50 kg it means 9 into 50 so their total weight will be 450 kg 
right? So their total weight, this is their total weight. This is their total weight, fine. The average weight of first five person is 45 kg. So first five person, so first five person will be 45 kg, so 225 kg. So sum of the weightage of first five person will be 225 kg, whereas the average weight of last five person is 55 kg. Okay. So last five persons, so sum of the weights of last five person will be 275 kg, fine. So just add them, right? So this will be 500 kg. Okay, why I have done this, I'm telling you, everyone, there are, let's say there are nine persons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So when they are saying the first five person, so it is like this, and when they are saying the last five persons, so it is like this, right? So here the weight of fifth person is being calculated twice. The weight of fifth person is being calculated twice. So this is the sum of 500 kg, right? That we have calculated 500 kg. So in this 500 kg, the weight of fifth person has been calculated twice, right? So now, if we just subtract the overall average of nine persons from this value. So what is the sum of the nine people? Sum of the weights of nine people is 450, right? So actually we are getting 50 kg. So weight of fifth person is 50 kg actually. Right everyone, fine, clear. So this is 50 kg, all right. The answer is 50 kg. See, this question belongs to average topic, but here like the topic the understanding of the topic is not that important. If you are able to think this question in that manner, which is actually required, right? Now let's move to other question. Next question says, in a group of six women, there are four tennis players, four postgraduates in sociology, one postgraduate in commerce, three bank employees, Vimla, Kamla. Okay, so first of all, we need to draw all six characters. Vimla, Kamla, Amala, Komala. Okay. So Amala, Komala, and Nirmala, Shamla. Okay. Nirmala, Shamla. Nirmala and Shamla. Right. Okay. And now there, this thing, I mean occupations and all. So first is tennis player. Okay. So tennis player is TP. After that PG in sociology. PG in sociology. Then PG in commerce. Okay. PG in commerce. Okay. Then bank employees. Bank employee. Okay. Fine. Right, so this is the table. Now we need to fill their entries according to the given data. Right, okay. So what the question is saying, I mean, what the statements are given to us, four tennis player, okay. So four tennis player, four postgraduate in sociology, four postgraduate in sociology, four tennis player, four postgraduate in sociology, three bank employee, and one postgraduate in commerce. So one postgraduate in commerce and three bank employee. Right. So this is the thing. Fine everyone. Right. All right. Now let's talk about the question. Next information is Vimla and Kamla are bank employees. Vimla and Kamla are bank employees. So Vimla and Kamla are bank employees. Okay, fine. While Amala and Komala are unemployed. So Amala and Komala are unemployed. Okay, fine. Komala and Nirmala are among the tennis player. Komala and Nirmala. Komala and Nirmala are among the tennis player. Okay, fine. Amla, Kamla, Komala, Nirmala. Amla, Kamla, Komala, Nirmala. Okay, so 
अम्ल कमल कुमाल निर्मल दे ऑल आर पी जी इन सोशियोलॉजी फाइन सो इफ दे आर पी जी इन सोशियोलॉजी टोटल फोर फोर वीमेन आर पी जी इन सोशियोलॉजी सो फोर वी हैव गॉट फाइन सो रेस्ट आर क्रॉस्ड फाइन ओके सो अमाला कमाला अमाला कमला कुमाला एंड निर्मला आर पी जी इन सोशियोलॉजी ऑफ हुम टू आर बैंक एम्प्लॉय ओके of whom two are bank employees so c kamla is bank employee is fine and nirmala should be bank employee because nirmala is pg in sociology right so nirmala will be bank employee fine so we have got three bank employees total three bank employees are there so we have got three bank employees so next will be crossed okay if shamla is post graduate in commerce shamla is in commerce so shamla post graduate in commerce only one person is there so okay fine right okay who among the following is both tennis player and bank employee tennis player and bank employee so tennis player and bank employee is nirmala right everyone nirmala is tennis player and bank employee as well as pg in sociology the answer is nirmala right okay now let's move to the other question next question is saying p is equal to 40% of a plus 65% of b and q is equal to 50% of a plus 50% of b where a is greater than b in this context which of the following statement is correct all right it means everyone here a and b are not given but it is given that a is greater than b so we need to assume a and b from our side and then we have to check these values of p and q and then we have to find the relationship between p and q and four options are given fine but here the values of a and b are not given so obviously we need to assume it so we can assume any value that we want but we have to just take care of this condition a is greater than b so we just take case 1 let a is equal to 30 and b is equal to 20 right so P is equal to what? P is forty percent of A, forty percent of thirty. Forty percent of thirty is what? Twelve plus sixty-five percent of B. Sixty-five percent of twenty. Sixty-five percent of twenty is thirteen. So here P is equal to what? P is equal to twenty-five. Okay. Now let's talk about Q. Q is equal to what? Fifty percent of A plus fifty percent of B. 50% of 30 is 15 and 50% of 20 is 10 so here q is equal to 25 right so we can say p is equal to q with these two values of a and b all right okay now let's consider another set of values of p and uh, i mean a and b so let's say this time we are considering a as 100 and b as 20 So what is p? P is equal to forty percent of a. So forty percent of hundred. Forty percent of hundred is hundred, plus sixty-five percent of b. Sixty-five percent of twenty is what? Thirteen. So this time p is fifty-three. Now let's talk about q. So fifty percent of a. So fifty percent of hundred, which is fifty, plus fifty percent of b. Fifty percent of twenty is ten. So this time q is sixty. So now what? we are getting the relationship between p and q so this time p is less than q right in case number 1 p is equal to q but in case number 2 p is less than q right now let's talk about the options p is greater than q q is greater than p p is equal to q none of the above can be concluded certainly right see everyone here none of the above can be concluded with certainty the reason is it depends the relationship between p and q depends upon the values of a and b right and we are free to assume any values of p and, uh, of a and b okay so obviously once we change the values of a and b the relationship between a and b will be i mean relationship between p and q will be changed so here none of the conclusion can be drawn about the relationship of p and q Okay option D is the right choice 
Now let's move to the other question. Next question is saying a watch loses 2 minutes in 24 hours while another watch gains 2 minutes in every 24 hours. At a particular instant, the two watches showed an identical time. Which of the following statement is correct if 24 hour clock is followed? Alright, see everyone, one watch is losing 2 minutes, another is gaining 2 minutes, right? So effectively 2 plus 2, 4 minutes difference is being created uh, between the times of two watches in 24 hours. 4 minutes difference is being created in 24 hours. Right? Clear? So 4 minutes is being created in 24 hours. Or you can say 4 minutes difference is being created in one day. Right? So 60 minutes difference is being created. 60 minutes, why I am writing it 60 minutes? Because it is 1 hour. So 1 hour difference is being created in 1 by 4 into 60. So this is 15 days. Right? So 1 hour difference between these two watches is being created in 15 days. Right? To show the correct time, question is asking which of the following statement is correct if 24 hours clock is followed, right? The question is, I mean the statements are two watches show the identical time again, right? To show the identical time actually, to show the identical time, to show the identical time. they should have the time difference they should have the time difference as 24 hours right uh, let's say if they have 24 hours difference then obviously if one clock is showing 2 am then another clock is also showing 2 am though it is a different story that the one clock is showing 2 a.m. of let's say it is 5th June and another clock will be so showing 2 a.m. of 6th June, right? But both will be showing 2 a.m. only, right? So now we have to find how in how many days the difference of 24 hours will be created between these two clocks, fine? So the question is, I mean, we have already found one hour difference is being created in 15 days. So 24 hours difference is being created in how many days? right so 24 into 15 okay so this is how many days 24 into 15 so this will be 360 days right 360 days the answer is 360 days so after 360 days they will be showing the correct time I mean the identical time again right so none of the above statement is correct because the first is 30 days, second is 90 days, third is 120 days. But our answer is what? Our answer is 360 days, right? So after 360 days, they will be showing the correct time again, right? All right, now let's move to the next one. Next question says, in a city, 12% of household earn less than 30,000 per year. 6% household earn more than 2 lakhs per year. 22% household earn more than 1 lakh per year and 990 household earn between 3 thousand sorry between 30,000 and 1 lakh per year how many household earn between 1 lakh and 2 lakhs per year all right everyone here ranges are given right so just draw the scale of 100% here let's say this 100% population okay this is the 100% population and 12% household earn less than 30k. So this is the benchmark of 30k and then 1 lakh and then 2 lakh. Right. So question is saying 12% of household earn less than 30,000. So 12% belong to here who are earning less than 30,000. Okay. And 6% earn 
more than 2 lakhs per year. So, 6% belong to here who are earning more than 2 lakhs per year. Okay. And 22% household earn more than 1 lakh per year. 22% household earn more than 1 lakh per year. So, 22% belong to here who are earning more than 1 lakh. This is 22%. Okay. So, this area this area is what? This area is the difference of 22 and 6%. So, 22 minus 6 will come here, right? So, 22 minus 6 is what? 16%. So, 16% are earning between 1 lakh to 2 lakh, okay? This is the difference of 22 and 6, right? And obviously, this reason is what? This reason is the difference of this 12% and this 22%, fine? So, this is what, this is actually 100% minus 12% plus 22%, right? This reason will be the difference of total minus this plus this, okay? Fine. So, this is 100% minus 12% plus 22%. So, 100% minus 12 plus 22 is 32, 34%. So, this is actually 66%, right? So, 66% are earning between 30,000 to 1 lakh, okay? And question is saying 990, 990 households earn between 30,000 and 1 lakh per year, right? So, according to question, 66% is equal to 990, right? Question is saying 990 are earning between 30, 30,000 to 1 lakh and we have calculated 66,000 are earning between 33,000, sorry, 30,000 and 1 lakh. So, obviously, they must be equal 66%, 66% is equal to 990, fine. So, now the question is what? Question is saying how many household earn between 1 lakh to 2 lakh per year? So, according to our calculation, we have calculated that 16% household 16% household are earning between 1 lakh to 2 lakh. So, actually the question is what? 66% is given to us. We need to find 16% is equal to how much, right? Yeah. How many household are there? Fine. So, 66% is equal to 990. So, obviously 1% is equal to 990 by 66. Okay. And 16% is equal to 990 divided by 66 into 16. Clear? Fine. So, this is what? This is actually 15 and 15 into 16 is 240. Okay. So, 240 household are earning between 1 lakh to 2 lakh. Option B is the right choice. Fine. Friends, this question is simple, but this question is a bit time taking question. Right. This question is simple, but this will take a time because uh, here, so many informations are given, so you have to arrange so much, so much of data in this question, right? So, please be alert while reading this question, right? And please arrange the data carefully. All right. Now, let's talk about the next question. Next question says, a clock strikes once at 1 o'clock, twice at 2 o'clock, thrice at 3 o'clock and so on. If it takes 12 seconds to strike 5 o'clock, what is the time taken by it to strike at 10 o'clock? Okay. So, 5 o'clock means 5 times according to the given data and 10 o'clock means 10 times, right? So, for 5, uh, striking it for 5 times, it takes 12 seconds. So, it's striking 10 times, what time it will take? Just double of 12 seconds. So, this is 24 seconds, right? It will take 24 seconds to strike at 10 o'clock, right? So, this is the answer. Fine. Okay. Now, let's move to the other one. Next question says, consider the given statement and the two conclusions that follow. Statement, morning walk is good for health. Okay. Conclusion, all healthy people go for morning walk. All healthy people. No. All healthy people is not given in the question. Next one is, morning walk is essential. This is also not given, right? Both are not correct. 
so neither one nor two what is are the valid conclusions neither one nor two now let's move to the other one next question is there are 13 two digit consecutive odd numbers if 39 is the mean of first five such numbers see everyone 39 is the mean of first five such number and they are consecutive odd natural numbers right uh this concept we have explained very well in our average topic which is uh, available in our paid course uh see everyone here if there are five consecutive terms then obviously the average will be what the average will be third number right why because two terms are here and two terms are here so the exactly mid number is this one so 39 is the average so two numbers here and two numbers here will be there so 39 2 backward side will be 35 and 37 and 2 after that is 41 and 43 right now if there are 13 numbers 13 consecutive odd natural numbers so what will be the average for 13 natural numbers so average for 13 natural numbers will be Sixth, no, sorry, seventh, seventh number, right? If thirteen numbers are written, I'm writing the thirteen numbers: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen, right? So six number we are removing from here, and six numbers we are removing from here. So exactly middle will be the seventh one, right? So seventh number will be the average of the 13 number right so here first second third fourth and fifth so sixth and seventh next two numbers we need to write so next one is 45 and then 47 47 will be the seventh term right so this is the average of all 13 natural numbers all 13 consecutive odd natural numbers right so the answer is 47 this concept we have very well discussed in our this average topic right which is available in our paid course so if you want to join that you can join to understand this concept very well and this actually this concept is an important concept and here you have to think logically all the time right there is no need to mug up the concept and there is no need to use heavy duty mathematics right just thinking and you will get the solution now let's move to the other one next question is Six boy A B C D E F play a game of cards. Each has a pack of ten cards. F borrows two cards from A. Okay, fine. So here we have to solve this question step by step. A B C D E and F. So initially all have ten cards. Okay, fine. F borrows two cards from A. It means minus two. and plus 2 f is getting two cards from a so obviously the number of a will be reduced by 2 and number of f will be increased by 2 fine okay so f borrows two cards from a and gives away five cards to c okay f gives five cards to c it means minus 5 and it is plus 5 right who in turn gives three card to b who in turn gives three card to b okay while b gives 6 to d b gives 6 to d okay who passes 1 to e all right so this is the final step so 10 minus 2 it is 8 i am talking about a right final number so this is 10 plus uh, 10 minus 3 it is 7 Now this is ten plus two, which is twelve. Now this is fifteen. This is eleven, and this is what seven. Right? Okay. Fine. So these are the final numbers, final number of cards with them, right? And these are the initial number of cards with them. Okay. All right. So now, what is the question? 
then the card possessed by D and E is equal to the number of card possessed by D and E. So D and E is D plus E, 15 plus 11, right? 15 plus 11 is what? 15 plus 11 is 26. So D and E combine their possess, they are, they have 26 cards, fine. Now, B, C and F. B plus F, we ha we, uh, they have 14, 7 plus 7, 14, 14 and 12 is 26, right? So B, C, F combined, they are having 26 cards. So the answer is B, C, F, right? B, C, F combined, they have 26 cards. Okay, fine. Now let's move to the other one. Next question is, there is a milk sample with 50% water in it. One third of this milk is added to the equal amount of pure milk. Okay. There is a milk sample with 50% water in it, right? So let's say there is 12 liters of milk, which has 6 liter milk and 6 liter water. Right. Okay. Now they are saying one third of this milk, one third of this, so one third of this, one third of 12 is what? 4 liter, right? So 4 liter of this milk is added to the equal amount of pure milk, okay? So 4 liter of this milk will be having 2 liter milk and 2 liter water. Why? Because it is, it is having 50% milk and 50% water, right? And it is added with 4 liter of pure milk. This is milk and this is water right so 4 plus 4 total now we have 8 liters of mixture and in that 8 liter 2 liter and 4 liter 6 liter milk is there right and 2 liter of water will be there right everyone fine so in the resultant mixture 2 liter water will be there out of 8 liter. What is the question? Then water in the new mixture will fall down too. So this is 2 liter water out of 8 liter. So this is 1 fourth, right? So if we convert this value into percentage, we, we will have to multiply this by 100. So this is 25%, right? So we have 25% water con concentration in the new mixture, right? So the answer is 25%, fine. Simple one. Okay, you just have to follow the instruction of the questions. That's it, right? Okay, now let's move to the other one. Next question is, there are four horizontal and four vertical lines, parallel and equidistant to one another on a board. What is the maximum number of rectangles and squares that can be formed? See everyone, it has a direct formula, right? This topic is based on permutation and combination total number of squares, right? So if M lines are intersecting the N lines, I mean M parallel lines are intersecting the N parallel lines, then the total number of rectangle will be MC2 into NC2, right? This is the direct formula, which is being taught in permutation and combination, right? This we have discussed in our paid course. Again, I'm saying, right? So this is 4C2 into 4C2. Four parallel lines are intersecting the four parallel lines, right? So this is what four C2 will be 6, 6 into 6, this is 36, right? So the answer is 36. For this particular question, you should have to have some background of mathematics or uh, you should have the knowledge of permutation and combination. If you have studied this topic, then you can solve this question in the examination. Else, it will be difficult for you to solve this question in the examination because you have to count so many, uh, I mean, so many rectangles and squares, right? Now let's move to the other one. Next question is, a freight train left Delhi for Mumbai at an average speed of 40 km per hour. Okay. Delhi. And let's say here it is Mumbai. Right. So 40 km per hour. Okay. Two hours later. Right. So I am just drawing the scenario of two hours later, right? So two hours later, the freight train, freight train will be 40 into 2, 80 kilometers 
away right okay so after 2 hours the freight train will be covering 80 kilometers why because 40 km in first hour and 40 km in the second hour right so it is 80 kilometers away from delhi fine okay so freight train is moving towards mumbai with the speed of 40 km per hour right and following the freight train on a parallel track at an average speed of 60 km per hour express train an express train left delhi for mumbai okay so after 2 hours an express train left delhi for mumbai at 60 km per hour express train okay right now what is the question how far from delhi would the express train meet the freight train meet the freight train means what freight train i mean express train has to catch the freight train actually right okay to catch the freight train to catch the freight train express train has to cover 80 kilometers more than the freight train in the same time right fine so what is the relative speed relative speed is uh 20 kilometers per hour right so it is covering 20 kilometers in one hour and it has to cover 80 kilometers right so for 80 kilometers it will take 4 hours right what is the question so obviously after 4 hours freight train will be caught i mean express train will catch the freight train fine what is the question how far from delhi would the express train meet the freight train so after 4 hours the express train will meet the freight train and how far away from delhi so its speed is 60 km per hour right so in 60 km with the speed of 60 km per hour in 4 hours the distance it will cover will be 240 km right so 240 km from new delhi the express train will catch the freight train right everyone fine okay right Obviously, in four hours, the distance it will cover by two forty kilometers, and after four hours, it will catch. I mean, I mean, in four hours, four hours, it will catch the freight train. So the distance it will covered will be equal to the required distance. Fine. Okay. Now let's move to the other one. Next question is saying in a test, Randhir obtained more marks than the total marks obtained by Kunal and Debu. Randhir obtained more marks than the total marks obtained by Kunal and Debu. Okay. After that, the total marks obtained by Kunal and Shankar are more than those of Randhir. Kunal and Shankar. All right. Then Sonal obtained more marks than Shankar. Okay. Then Neha obtained more marks than Randhir. Neha obtained more marks than Randhir. Who amongst them obtained the highest marks? See everyone, here we have so so many characters and we don't have any comparison here. Let's say we don't have any comparison between Sonal and Neha, right? We can't compare these two characters, right? And similarly, we can't compare Shankar and Randhir also, right? Because Shankar, in, I mean, the marks of Shankar included with the marks of Kunal are increasing with the marks of Randhir, right? So we exactly don't have any comparison between these data. So the correct answer is data is inadequate, right? We can't even tell who among them they obtain highest marks okay so now let's talk about the other question next question says certain three digit numbers have the following characteristics 
all the three digits are different. Okay, so let's say the number is x, y, z. All the three digits are different. The number is divisible by 7. x, y, z is divisible by 7. The number on reversing its digit, the number, number on reversing the digits is also divisible by 7. Reversing the digits means the number becomes z, y, x. Right? Earlier it was x, y, z. Now we have reversed the digits. It becomes z, y, x. So it is z, y, x is also divisible by 7. Okay, fine. Friends, you know, this question is actually a very tough case of number system. Right? Why I'm saying it is very tough? Because it is divisible by 7. And in general, divisibility rule of 7 is not being followed in general. And uh, you know what happens is, generally people divide the number by 7 and then check it out whether this number is divisible by 7 or not right so that's why this question will be a time taking question if you solve this question completely in the examination so please try to avoid this question during examination because it will take a lot of time of your number one and number two uh, and this paper is actually a qualifying paper fine so you will get plenty of questions just to qualify the paper but in spite of that i'm explaining this question and please decide yourself whether you should solve this question during the examination or not. The concept is difference between a two digit number, difference between a two digit number, sorry, not two digit number, three digit number, difference between a three digit number x, y, z and its reverse. Reverse means when we are reversing the digits, right? And its reverse reverse is z, y, x, right? So difference between a three digit number x, y, z and its reverse is always divisible by 99 and equal to 99 mod x minus z. x minus z means first digit and last digit difference we will take and then we will multiply it with 99. So what does this concept say? The concept says x, y, z minus z, y, x is equal to 99 mod x minus z. This is the concept. Fine. And why I'm using this concept over here, friends? Because x, y, z is a multiple of 7 and z, y, x is a multiple of 7. Then their difference will obviously be a multiple of 7. Right, I repeat, here x, y, z is a multiple of 7 and z, y, x will also be the multiple of 7, then their difference will obviously be a multiple of 7, right? Now, according to the condition, I mean this concept, x, y, z and the difference of x, y, z and z, z, y, x is this, right? And question is saying the difference is a multiple of 7, right? Because both the numbers are the multiple of 7, then their difference will obviously be the multiple of 7, right? So their difference will be equal to some multiple of 7, let's say it is 7 times k, right? Now, here it is 99 into x minus z. So let's say k is equal to k becomes 99, then x minus z should become 7, right? Here, k is what? k is just a constant number, fine? So 99 becomes k. So here x minus z has to be equal to 7 fine now why i'm using x minus z as 7 x minus z can be 7 or a multiple of 7 also but it is a difference of two single digits number here x is what x can be 0 to 9 and y also can be sorry z also can be 0 to 9 right so here z and x are two single digits number fine so their difference is 7 so it means x minus z has to be 7 fine or z minus x or x minus z. So now x and z. So x, let's say we are starting with 9 and then 8, right? And then here it is 2 and 1. Sorry, it is not y, it is z. I'm really sorry. It is z. So x and z, the difference between x and z is 7. So it is 9, 2 or 8, 1. Now we have to fill y also, right? So 9, y, 2 and 8, y1. So these are the numbers and y can take any value between 0 to 1. Sorry, 0 to 9. Because y is also a single digit number, right? 
but the question is saying all three digits are different so y can take any value other than 2 and 9 similarly here y can take any value other than 8 and 1 fine and obviously it has to be divisible by 7 also so when you will uh, check it so this becomes 952 and similarly this becomes 861 so here 952 and 861 these are the two numbers and they are reverse 259 and 168 these are the two numbers right so total there are four numbers these are two numbers and these are two numbers so total there are four numbers which are satisfying the condition of the question right so these numbers are the multiple of 7 and their reverse will obviously be the multiple of 7 and all the three digits are different right so these these are the four numbers which are satisfying the condition of the question so this is option B is the correct choice but friends again let me tell you this question is actually very tough so please try to avoid this question during the examination because you have to only qualify the paper you have to only the you know qualify the paper so uh, you will get plenty of questions just to qualify your paper no problem there is no need to solve these type of question they will be time taking and uh, they will make you tired also all right now let's move to the other question next question is examine the following statements all colors are pleasant some colors are pleasant no color is pleasant some colors are not pleasant okay given that a statement 4 is true which can be definitely concluded okay if a statement 4 is true then a statement 1 is definitely false why because the statement 4 says some colors are not pleasant so if some colors are not pleasant then all colors can't be pleasant fine so statement 1 is definitely false so is it in our options 1 and 2 are true 3 is true 2 is false 1 is false yeah 1 is definitely false right this is the correct choice okay all right now let's move to the other one next question says how many numbers are there between 99 to 100 such that the digit 8 occupies the units place okay see everyone the first number will be 108 because we need to find between 99 to 1000 right so first number will be 108 then 118 then 128 and then 198 right so these are 10 numbers right similarly 208 to 298 again we will be having 10 numbers right then 308 to 398 again we will be having 10 numbers up to what up to 908 to 998 right we will be having 10 numbers fine okay so it is starting from 1 i mean 108 and it is going till 9 908 right so obviously how many slots do we have here i mean 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 up to 9 so total 9 slots of 10 numbers each right so 9 into 10 the answer is 90 numbers right the answer is 90 such numbers are there the correct answer is 90 c option will be the right choice okay fine now let's move to the other one next question says if for a sample data mean is less than median is less than mode then the distribution is okay see everyone this is the question which is based on statistics right but if you don't know please don't solve this question right don't worry if you don't know please don't solve so this is mean this is median and this is mode right so actually this is what this is is skewed to the left the correct answer is skewed to the left but you can leave this question if you don't have the background of a statistics right no problem right next question says the age of mr x last year was the square of a number and it would be the cube of a number next year what is the least number of years he must wait for his age to become a cube of a number again all right see everyone q 
cube of a number, right? So what are the cubes of the number? One, one cube is one, two cube is eight, three cube is 27, four cube is 64, five cube is 125, six cube is 216. 216 I'm not considering because it is the age of a person, right? So I'm just considering it till 125, right? So next year, the age will be a perfect cube, right? So present age and last year. So present age is zero. So this case also can't be considered. So present age is seven and last year it was six. Present age is 26 and last year it was 25. Present age is 63 and last year it was 62. Present age is 124 and last year it was 123. See, everybody, we have got four cases, right? The question is saying the age of Mr. X last year was the square of a number and next year it will be a cube of a number. So a square of the number. So here 25 is the perfect square and 27 is the perfect cube. So it means his present age is 26 years. Last year it was perfect square and next year it will be perfect cube, right? So his age is actually 26 years, right? So what is the least number of years he must wait for his age to become the cube of a number again? So Currently, he is 26 and next cube is coming at 64, right? So currently, he is 26 and he has to wait till he becomes 64 years of age, right? So obviously, this is what? This is 38 years he has to wait, right? 38 years he has to wait for his age to become a cube again, right? All right, now let's move to the other one. Next question is P works thrice as fast as Q, whereas P and Q work can work four times as fast as R. If P, Q are together work on a job, in what ratio they share their earnings? Okay, see everyone, they share their earnings, they share their earnings. in the ratio of their efficiencies, the ratio of their efficiencies, right? So question is saying P works thrice, just go through options and please go through options. I should recommend for this type of questions, go through options, don't solve them completely, right? So first option, this is P, this is Q and this is R, right? So first option, question is saying, P works thrice as fast as Q. So here P is to Q is 3 is to 1. So P is working as thrice as fast as Q. Fine. P and Q work together four times as R. So P plus Q becomes 4 and 4 is to 1. So yeah, it is correct. So here first option is the right choice, right? Okay. So 3 is to 1 is to 1 is their efficiency ratio. So obviously they will share the money in this ratio only. 3 is to 1 is to 1, right? So this is the correct answer. Now let's move to the other question. Next question is saying, consider the following relationships among the members of a family of six persons A, B, C, D, E and F. The number of males is equal to that of females. See everyone, there are six persons, three are males and three are females. Why? Because they are saying the number of male equals to the number of females, right? So three are males and three are females in the family. So from first statement, we can draw this conclusion. Now, second statement, a and E are sons of F. Okay, so A and E are sons of F. So A is son, right? And E is also son. So A is male and E is also male. M means male. Fine. So A and E are male. Gender of F is not known. D is the mother of two, one boy and one girl. Okay, D is the mother. Fine. B is the son of A. Again, one more son. B is the son of, so B is male, right? See everyone, we have got three males now. Now all the three will be females, rest. So F is female, right? Here F is female. Okay, there is only one married couple in the family at present. Okay, so there is only one married couple in this family at present. So D is D is the mother of two, one boy and one girl. So obviously D is married to A, D is female, D is married to A, 
and one boy is A and one girl will be what? One girl will be C. C will be female, right? Okay, fine. Now, question is which one of the following inferences can be drawn from the above? A, B, C are females? No. A is the husband of D. A is the husband of D. Yeah, it is correct. E and F are children of D. No. D is the daughter of F. No. Correct answer is option number B. Right. A is the husband of D. Fine. Okay. Now let's move to the other one. Next question is a bag contains 20 balls. 8 balls are green, 7 are white, 5 are red. What is the minimum number of balls that must be picked from the bag blindfolded to be assured of picking at least one ball of each color? Fine. See everyone, in this type of question, always start with the highest, right? So 8 plus 7 and just come to the least and just pick one piece from the least least one, right? So here are the balls, so one ball from the least one, right? So this will be the answer. 8 plus 7 plus 1, so this is 16 balls if we pick. So obviously we will be considering, I mean we will be, so it will be like assured that we have at least one ball of each color, right? Okay, so in this type of question, just start with the highest, the maximum number, then the second maximum number, and then the third maximum number, and then come to the lowest. And just pick one ball from the least number of balls. That's it. You will get the answer, right? The answer is 16 balls. Fine. Correct answer is option number B. Fine. Now let's move to the other one. Next question is saying, if two boys and two girls are to be arranged in a row, so that the girls are not next to each other. This question is saying girls are not together. Right. Girls are not together. Okay. Question is how many possible arrangements are there? Okay. Girls are not together we need to find. So what we can do is we can find the total number of arrangements. Total arrangements. And we can subtract girls together from that case. So this will give you what? Girls are not together. Right? This will give you girls or girls are not together. Okay, everyone. Now, total number of arrangements. See, there are four characters. Boy, two boys and two girls. So let's say this is boy one, boy two and girl one, girl two. There are four characters, right? So they can be arranged in how many ways? They can be arranged in factorial 4 ways. So total number of ways are factorial 4. Okay. Now they are saying girls are together. So girls are together. So just assume that both the girls as one character. So let's say this is B1, B2 and just put them in a box G1 and G2. So they are one character actually. Right. So now 1, 2, 3. So this is factorial 3, okay, into girl 1 and girl 2. So they can move in factorial 2 ways. So I mean they can be arranged in factorial 2 ways, not they can move, they can be arranged in factorial 2 ways. So this is factorial 3 into factorial 2 which is, uh, I mean factorial 3 is 6 and factorial 2 is 2 which is 12. So this is factorial 3 into factorial 2, right. So this will be what? This will be 24 minus 12. So 24 minus 12 is 12. Okay. Friends, this question belongs to the topic permutation and combination. And this is actually a type of question from that topic. Okay. This is a fixed type. And we have like three, four types from this topic, which are usually coming to the examination in every year. I mean, not in every year, but they usually come to the examinations. Right. So please just touch those three, four areas which are actually important from this permutation and combination topic. Right. And your purpose will be solved. No problem. Okay. Now let's move to the other one. Next question is saying the outer surface of a four by four by four cube is painted completely in red. It is sliced parallel 
to the faces to yield 64 1 by 1 by 1 small cubes. How many small cubes do not have painted faces? See everyone, here no face painted has been asked, right? No face painted has been asked, which has a direct formula which is n minus 2 raised to the power 3, n minus 2 cube. So here what is n? How many pieces does every side have? We have 4 pieces, right? So 4 minus 2 raised to the power 3. So this is 2 cube and 2 cube is what? 8, right? So we have 8 cubes with no face painted, right? So this is a simple question, just formula based, fine. Alright, now let's move to the other one. Next question is, consider the following. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, R is standing in a row facing north. B is not the neighbor of G. Okay, we will use this information later. F is to the immediate right of G and neighbor of E. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right. We don't know who is sitting where, but F is standing immediate right to the G and neighbor of E. Okay. F is standing immediate right to the G and neighbor of E. G is not at the extreme end. G is not at the extreme end. Okay. A is sixth to the left of E. Okay, fine. So, one, two, three, four, five, and sixth. So, A is to the 6th left of E. Alright. H is 6th to the right of C. Okay. H is 6th to the right of C. So, let's say C here. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6th h is to the 6th of c okay so here like 4 and 2 so we have 4 and 2 6 now we have to place two more people so first statement says b is not the neighbor of g b is not the neighbor of g it means b is coming here right so obviously d is left so d is coming here so this is a c b d g f e h which of the following is correct in respect to the above. Okay. So first is C is to the immediate left of A. No C is to the right of A. D is to the immediate neighbor of B and F. D is the immediate neighbor of B and F. No, it is not correct. G is to the immediate right of G. G is to the immediate right of D. Yes, it is correct. G is immediate right of D. It is correct. G is immediate right of D. Okay. A and D are extreme ends. No, it is not correct. Right. So, third one is the correct choice. Okay, everyone. Third one is the correct choice. Now, let's move to the other question. Next question is, in a certain code, 256 means red color chalk. See, everyone. 256 and then 589 means green color flower. So, 5 is common between these two, 256 two, and 589. 5 is common and here red color chalk and green color flower. So, color is the common, right? So, it means 5 is representing color, okay? Right, I repeat, 256 means red color chalk, 589 means green color chalk, green color flower. So, 5 is the common between these two and here color is the common between these two, right? So, 5 is representing color, okay? Then, 2, 5, 6 and then 2, 5, 4. So, here 2, 2 is now common. Red and chalk, white color chalk. Red color chalk and white color chalk, fine. So, color we have already decided, now chalk is left, right? So, 2 is representing representing chalk, okay? So, 2 is representing chalk, fine. Okay, the digit that indicates white, white is what? 4, see, this is statement, 254, white color chalk, right? 
So 2 and 5 are standing for color and chalk. So white is left, which is for 4. So 4 is representing white. Right. All right, everyone. 4 is representing white. Clear? All right. Now let's move to the other one. Next question says the average rainfall in a city for the first four days was recorded to be 0 0.40 inch. Okay. The rainfall of the last two days were in the ratio of 4 is to 3. All right. The average of the six days was 0 0.50 inch. What was the rainfall on the fifth day? Okay, fine. See everyone for first four days, it will be 0 0.40. So sum of first four days will be 0 0.40 into 4, right? And fifth day plus sixth day equal to the sum of 0.5 into 6, right? So this is 1.5, sorry, 1.6 plus fifth day plus sixth day is equal to 3, right? So fifth day plus sixth day is equal to 3 minus 1.6, so which is 1.4, right? And they are saying last two days the ratio was 4 is to 3. So this is 4 is to 3, right? So if we divide 1.4 in the, in the ratio of 4 is to 3, we will be getting 0 0.8 and 0 0.6, right? So fifth day it was 0 0.8 and sixth day it was 0 0.6, right? Okay. So what is the question? Fifth day. Fifth day it was 0 0.8 right the correct answer is 0.8 all right everyone fine okay now let's move to the other one next question is a puzzle based question a b c d e f and g are lecturers from different cities hyderabad delhi shillong kanpur chennai mumbai and srinagar not necessarily in the same order who participated in a conference each one of them from uh, each one of them is specialized in a different subject economics commerce history sociology geography mathematics and statistics not necessarily in the same order further we will use the tabular form tabular method to use uh, i mean to solve this question right so there are seven lecturers a b c d e f and g right now we will read the I mean informations. Lecturer from Kanpur is specialized in geography. Okay, we will use this letter. Lecturer D is from Shillong. Information two says D is from Shillong. Okay, so D is from Shillong. All right. Lecturer C is from Delhi and is specialized in sociology. All right. C is from Delhi and is specialized in sociology. All right. After that, B is specialized neither in history nor mathematics. Okay, fine. So B is neither history nor mathematics. All right. A, next information, fifth. A, who is specialized in economics. A, who is specialized in economics, does not belong to Hyderabad. Okay, fine. So A does not belong to Hyderabad. F, lecturer F, who is specialized in commerce, belongs to Srinagar. F belongs to Srinagar and he is specialized in commerce. All right. Okay. After that, G, lecturer G, who is specialized in stats, belongs to Chennai. G belongs to Chennai and is the faculty of stats. Right. All right. So now we are left with three subjects history mathematics and geography right so b is not the speciali especially specialized of history and maths so he is the specialized of geography right geography and first information says lecturer from kanpur is specialized in geography so he must be from kanpur all right now we are left with two cities, Hyderabad and Mumbai. So A is not from Hyderabad. It means A is from Mumbai. Right. And E is from Hyderabad. Right. 
and we are left with two subjects history and maths so regarding history and maths we don't have any information in this uh, question so history and maths we are not sure right so this is the table that we have made out of the given data right so now let's come to the question question one says who is specialized in geography so obviously b from kanpur is specialized in geography a option is the correct choice right okay now let's move to the other question to which city does the lecturer specialized in economics belong economics faculty belong to which city economics faculty belongs to mumbai a right economics specialist belongs to mumbai right a b option is the correct choice right now third who is who of the following belongs to hyderabad okay so hyderabad just come to the table hyderabad e belongs to hyderabad right everyone e belongs to hyderabad okay so e belongs to hyderabad b option is the correct choice e belongs to hyderabad right all right so though it is a lengthy puzzle but it is an easy puzzle because so many things are given over here so we just have to adjust the given i mean data we just have to set the given data in the correct format and the puzzle will be cracked right now let's move to the other question next question says in a school there are five teachers a b c d e a b teach hindi there are five teachers a b c d e right okay a b teach hindi and english hindi and english a b teach hindi and english okay b and c c and b teach english and geography b and c teach english and geography b teach english and geography okay d and a teach maths and hindi d and a teach maths and hindi d and a teach maths and hindi okay after that e and b teach history and french e and b teach history and french history and french history and french right after that who teaches the maximum number of subjects so obviously b teaches the maximum number of subjects right here you just have to arrange the given data the question will be solved accordingly right so there is no need to think more for this question you just have to arrange the given data that's it right okay now let's talk about the next question next question says a two digit number is reversed the larger of the two number is divided by the smaller one what is the largest possible remainder okay see everyone difference between a two digit number and its reverse is always a multiple of 9 and is equal to 9 mod x minus y right okay for example 52 minus 25 is equal to what difference between the digits is what 3 so this will be 9 into 3 so this is 27 right one more let's say 81 and 18 so 9 into 8 minus 1 will be 7 so 9 into 7 so this is 63 right so it happens actually right here x y is a two digit number y x is the reverse of it and it will be equal to 9 mod x minus y so 9 into the uh, 9 into difference of the digits right clear so that we have done here like as an example we have solved two examples over here clear okay so now the question is saying the larger of the two number is divided by the smaller one right so everyone here let's say 9 9 into 8 is one number right i am doing first 9 into 8 divided by 89 so what is the remainder 9 98 divided by 89 i am starting with 9 over here so obviously uh 9 is the 
greatest digit, right? Single digit, fine. So 9, 8 divided by 89. So the remainder is 9, right? Next, 9 into 7, oh, I mean 9 by 9, 7 divided by 79. So 9, 7 is 97. 97 by 79 is 18, right? After that, 9, 6. 69 96 by 69 this will give you 27 as remainder right after that 95 by 59 this will give you what remainder 36 remainder right after that 94 divided by 49 this will give you what remainder this will give you 45 as remainder right they all are remainders right everyone they all are remainders when we are dividing it fine they all are remainders clear you know the remainder right so they all are remainders okay all right now sixth 93 divided by 39 so this will what this will give you 15 as remainder why 39 to just 78 fine 78 plus 15 is 93 okay so this is 15 as remainder right so the maximum remainder can be 45, right? So this may be the case. Maximum remainder can be 45, right? A two digit number is reverse. Two digit number is let's say 49, right? Reverse 94. So the larger one is divided by the smaller one. So 94 has been divided by 49. So maximum remainder can be 45 in this case, right? This is the question, right everyone? The answer is D option is the correct choice, fine? This is again, let me tell you the type of question and obviously from 2017 onwards, these type of questions are coming in CSAT every year, right? Every year CSAT is asking these type of questions now, right? Now let's move to the other question. The next question is the monthly incomes X and Y are in the ratio 4 is to 3. Incomes. Four is to three. X and Y, right? And the expenses. And the expenses are in the ratio 3 is to 2. Right? Okay. However, each saves each saves rupees 6,000 per month. Right? See everyone. Here the difference is 1, right? Here the difference is 1 and here also the difference is 1. Fine. So, saving is what? income minus expenditure right the difference of income and expenditure so both the sides we are getting the difference as one and it is given as six thousand right so both of them is saving six thousand so one is equal to six thousand so obviously if one is equal to six thousand then six is equal to what sorry not six three is equal to what three is equal to three into six thousand and four is equal to four into six thousand right so this is 24,000 and here it is 18,000, right everyone, fine. So what is the question? What is their total monthly income? So their total monthly income is 24,000 plus 18,000, right? So 24,000 plus 18,000 is 42,000. All right everyone, the answer is 42,000, correct? Okay, this is again, uh, the I mean the application of ratio concepts only right so uh, this is a simple question of ratio but yes provided you should be knowing how to solve these type of questions right again now let's move to the other one next question is two walls and a ceiling of a room meet at right angles at a point P a fly is in the air one meter from one wall eight meter from other wall and nine meter from point P Okay, everyone, we all know this situation that two walls and one ceiling, they always meet at 90 degree, right? You can imagine your room or you can just observe your room carefully, you will get the situation, right? So two ceilings, sorry, two walls and one ceiling, they always meet at 90 degree, right? And obviously, they form a situation of cuboid, right? If, uh, if you just take one point P from outside, it will be a situation of cuboid, right? Let's say this is point P. Here, 
two walls and one ceiling is meeting right okay and here it is your fly right here it is your fly okay so the situation is your flies in the air is one meter from one wall eight meter from the other wall so this is let's say eight this is let's say one right and nine meter from nine meter from point P okay nine meter from point P so what is the question how many meters is the fly from ceiling ceiling is this right ceiling is this okay so this is the ceiling so question is how many meters is the fly from ceiling right so now we need to find this X okay so diagonal of the cuboid is what diagonal of cuboid is what so it this is given as 9 in the question right because the fly is 9 meter away from uh, 9 meter away from the point P so this is 9 and this is what 8 square plus 1 square plus x square right okay so 9 is equal to 8 square is what 8 square is 64 1 is 1 x square is x right so on squaring both the sides we are getting 81 is equal to 65 plus x square right so x square is equal to what x square is equal to 16 this implies x is equal to 4 meters right everyone x is equal to 4 meter fine this is an easy question provided you should be very much comfortable with the formula of mensuration and you should be able to imagine the cons uh, the question right but yes otherwise this will become a difficult question for you and uh, if you don't know the formula then please leave this question in the examination right okay now let's move to the other question next question says eight railway station a b c d e f g h are connected either by two way passage or one way passage one way passages are from c a c to a g e to g okay fine 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 two way passages are between this 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 and this okay while traveling from c to h all right so now we have to form this situation actually so a b c d e f g and h why i have done like this because there are eight stations so i just want if they have some interconnectivity kind of thing and all right now first of all we will be drawing the one way passage so one way passages are from c to a c to a okay so c to a this is a one way kind of thing now e to g e to g it is one way okay fine e to g it is one way b to f b to f it is one way right d to h okay d to h it is one way g to c g to c it is one way okay e to c e to c again it is one way okay and h to g h to g h to g it is one way okay fine two way passages are between a e a to e okay so this is a to e it is two way g and b okay g and b it is two way okay g and b it is two way f and d f and d it is two way okay fine f and d it is two way e and d e and d it is two way okay fine right so this is a web kind of situation right now let's uh, go to the questions while traveling from c to h which one of the following station must be passed through c to h okay everyone c to h the possible route is c a 
E D H, right? I repeat C A E D H, fine. C A E D H, fine. C to E, the possible, I mean C to E, this is the root. Fine. So, what is the question? While traveling from C to H, which one of the following station must be passed through? So, A, E, D must be passed through. So, what is the option? E is there in the option. So, correct op option is option number B. Fine. So, we will be using the same uh, chart for the other questions too, if there, there is any other question. Fine. Okay, one more question is there. Next question is, in how many different ways can a train travel from F to A without passing through any station more than once? Okay, F to A, more than once, right? Without passing any station more than once, F to A. Okay, fine. So, let's come to the previous question. F to A without more than once without passing any station more than once, right? Without passing more than once any station. F to A. So first, what I can see is, it is F D H. F D H G C A. I repeat, F D H G C A fine. So F D H sorry F D H G C A right okay. After that next root is F D E C A what I can see F D E C A I repeat F D E C A fine. F D E C A fine. So third root will be then F D E A also it can happen F D E A because E to A there are I mean they are connected two way passages F D E A. So F D E A can also happen right. Another one root is also there F D E G C A F D E G C A fine. F D E G C A. I repeat F D E G C A. Right? So there are four roots are possible without using any other root more than once. Right? So F to A, there are four roots. What are the options? One, two, three, four. The correct answer is fourth four options. Right? Okay. Now let's talk about the next question. Oh, the next question is also clubbed in the given data. The question is saying if the root G to C is closed, G and C is closed. Okay, G and C is what? G and C is one way, right? Okay. So if the root G and C is closed, which of the following stations need not to be passed through traveling H to C? Okay, let's move to the previous question only. G and C. G and C is closed. Okay, G and C is closed. Right. We need to move H to C. Right. This is the third question. So G and C is closed. Right. We need to move H to C. Okay, fine. H, G, B, F, D, E, C. Right, everyone? Wait, let me write it H G B F D E C, right? H G B H G B F D E C, right? Okay, fine. So, uh, what was the question? Question was H to C. Which of the station need not to be passed through while traveling from H to C? Okay, just wait. Let me write the route over here. 
it was HGB FDEC, right? HGB FDEC, right? This was the root, okay? So the question is, if the root between G and C is closed, which of the following stations need not to be passed through while traveling from H to C? Okay, so we are moving through E. Yes, we are moving through E. We are moving through D. Yes, we are moving through D. We are moving through B also. We are not using A, right? So here we are not going through A option. I mean A root. Fine. Okay, so the correct answer is C option. See everyone, this question is also not very easy question, right? Here you have to f first draw the diagram and then you have to find and obviously the options are sometimes very close. Like suppose that, uh, I mean, in the roots, in the last question where we are getting four roots, options are one, two, three, four, all options are there, right? So this question is a risky one, fine. So friends, that's why I have said earlier in the beginning of the paper, this question paper was not at all easy, right? This question paper was, uh, I mean, I will, I will, uh, put that paper, put this 2017 question paper in the category of tough papers of CSAT, right? Okay, now let's move to other question. Next question says, there are certain two digit numbers. If the difference between the number and the one obtained on reversing, it is always 27. See everyone, 27 is the difference, right? So x y minus y x is equal to 27 and we know x y minus y x is equal to 9 mod x minus y, right? So mod x minus y is equal to what? It is equal to 3, right? So difference between x and y will be 3. So let's say it is 4 and 1. So this is 2, this is 3, this is 4 and this will be what? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this is 4, 5 and 6, right? And here 30 can also be included. The reason is the reverse of 30 is 3. It won't be a two digit number, but 30 is satisfying the condition, right? Because 41 here, the first number is 41, the second number is 52, third number is 63, fourth number is 74, fifth number is 85, sixth number is 96 and seventh number is 30. So there are seven such numbers, right? Whose difference when you subtract from this number, you will get three, sorry, you will get 27, right? So 41 minus 14, it is 27. 52 minus 25, it is 27, right? 74 minus 47, it is 27, right? And similarly, 30 minus 3, when you will doing it will be 27, right? So you can consider 30 as an answer, right? 3 is not a two digit number, I agree, but 30 is satisfying the condition of the question because 30 and it's reverse 3, the difference of the two numbers will be 27, right? So here, how many such numbers are there? Maximum such numbers are 7, right? So the correct answer is none of the above. All right, everyone. So again, I'm saying this is the type of concept. This is a type of question which CSAT is asking now year by year, right? So please work on this concept, please. Right, everyone. In this paper, around three, four questions are based on this concept only, right? Okay, now let's move to other one. Next question is, what is the total number of digits printed what is the total number of digits printed if a book containing 150 pages is to be numbered from 1 to 150? Okay, see everyone, from 1 to 9, how many digits are there? 1 to 9 we have, we are using 9 digits, right? From 10 to 99, how many digits we are using? We are using, actually they are 90 numbers, right? So 90 number and every number is consuming 2 digits, so there are 180 digits we are using. Right, and now from 100 to 150, 100 to 150 there are 51 numbers and every number is using 3 digits. So actually we are using 153 digits. Right, see friends, question is saying what? What is the total number of digits printed? Right, so we need to find how many digits we are using when we are writing from 1 to 150. 
right? The question is how many digits we are using when we are writing from 1 to 150, right? Clear? So that's why I have calculated the number of digits, how many digits we are using. When we are writing from 1 to 9, we are actually using 9 digits. When we are writing 10 to 99, we are using 90 into 2 digits because here every number consists of 2 digits and there are 90 numbers, right? So 90 into 2 digits, there are 180 digits. Now from 100 to 150, there are 51 numbers and every number is using 3 digits. So 51 into 3, we are using 153 digits at all, right? So now just add all of them. Right. So here, the answer will be what? The answer will be 342, right? Okay. This is again a type of question. Now CSAT is asking. Now they have, I mean, they have started asking. So if they have started asking, they will be asking this question, this type of question again in the coming years, right? So friends, please work on this type also. Fine. The correct answer is 342, right? So now, now I guess uh, this video is over. Yes, uh, friends, thank you so very much for watching this video. And yes, again, this was a tough paper, right? This was not an easy paper. And I know so many good students who have, who could not qualify this paper, right? So friends, please work on CSAT. Don't ignore it, right? Thank you very much. Thank you.